Welcome to the Broadway Gives Back Podcast. I'm your host, Jan Svensson. This podcast spotlights Broadway actors, shows, and organizations in their pursuit of social impact and philanthropy. Join us as some of the brightest lights on Broadway share their stories about their favorite charities and how they got involved, and the people and the causes who benefited from these philanthropic efforts. This is the podcast episode you've all been waiting for. My guest today is one of the nicest, most talented, and most philanthropic people I have ever met. Hugh Jackman is the most down-to-earth superhero and is a multiple award winner with Tonys, Emmys, a Grammy, a Golden Globe, and maybe the one most relevant to this podcast is the special Tony Award he received, recognizing his accomplishments both as a performer as well as a humanitarian. Hugh and his wife, Deb, support so many causes, and he has broken the fundraising record for Broadway Cares multiple times. I am so excited and honored to have this incredible human as my guest today. Hugh, welcome to the Broadway Gives Back podcast. It is my pleasure. I mean, who wouldn't love an intro like that, Jan? Thank you. You are so welcome. Glenn and I have had the pleasure to know you since you hosted the very first Tony Awards way back when, and we are happy to call you a friend. And I wanted to say congratulations on yet another Tony nomination for The Music Man. That's so exciting. And you must be so busy, but I wanted to thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. Thank you so much. No, it's thrilling. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to lie. It's tiring, but it's kind of the best kind of tide you can have, I think. Something about, I just, just love being back on Broadway, being in that community, being in that flow with that incredible cast and it's tired but it, I, I kind of love it if that makes sense it totally makes sense so let's start with some rapid fire questions consider this a little warm-up i know you do some vocal warm-up before you go on stage so consider this a little bit of warm-up before we get into our conversation about social impact and charity okay got it what are three words that you think describe yourself curious mm, can i make hard working one word can that be one? Okay, let's just... Yeah, we can hyphenate it. With a hyphen, hardworking. And uh, I'm going to say courageous. Would you say that you're more Wolverine or Harold Hill? Oh, <laughs> I'm neither of them, to be honest. <laughs> but I, I guess I would be closer to Harold. No, both of them are a long way away from me. If I had... And a dead heat, okay, I'll, I'll go Harold. Okay, Harold. So if you could be part of any fictional family, whether on Broadway or television or film, which family would you want to be a member of, either now or during your childhood? Oh, when I was growing up, it was Eight is Enough. I love that show. Yeah, I don't know why. That's the first thing that popped into my head. Where is your happy place? Uh, In the ocean, swimming. And what is your most used emoji uh fingers crossed <laughs> ah, fingers crossed <laughs> and what do you most give a damn about my family what are you most grateful for my family speaking of family it seems to me like philanthropy is a part of your dna mm. and i wanted to go back into the history of your giving back do you think it comes from something that you saw modeled when you were growing up, something from your family or something in your community, or is it something that came to you later in life? No, definitely something I was um, taught growing up. I mean, my father in particular used to teach us, like if we got, say, 20 cents of pocket money a week, he would tell us how to split that up. He was an accountant, right? So very, very specific. So, But 10% always had to be given back when we were younger to the church. So we would go to church. So he would make us put a two cent piece into the plate from when as young as I remember. And another 10% had to go into my bank. So there's all these bank deposits of two cents every week. And then he would say entertainment, four cents. Like I was a kid. I didn't know what it meant. But that idea of giving back was always there. I think I was brought up very much in a church. And I think that's very much a part of the ethic there. And my mother, too, um, even to this day, she volunteers. She, she's 83. She volunteers all over the place. And my father, when he, when he, even when he left work, he spent years working for free overseas 
using his skills as an accountant for lots of businesses. So I was taught it from a young age that it's a duty, really. It's not just like a nice thing to do. It's, that's what being in a community is, looking after everybody. And in the same way you would with your family, you know, we always say you're only as happy as your unhappiest kid. But, you know, I think that circle should be growing as we get older. So it's not just your immediate family, it's your, then your friends and then your community. And, and hopefully that community gets wider and wider. So I, it was definitely something I was modeled. I modeled, yeah. Hugh, you and Deb started a foundation and you support dozens of charities and causes, including things like children's welfare and adoption, arts education, and other big global issues. So I want to go back to this idea now of modeling philanthropy. And I was thinking about your kids, Oscar and Ava. And I wondered, are they part of the discussions that you have at home about your foundation and about your giving back? We talk really openly with them about it and always have. So even when they were very little, probably starting when they were eight or nine, at the end of every year when we would, I mean, we'd make grants during the year, but at the end of the year, we would particularly sit down and look at the organizations that matter to us. And so we would explain this to them that a percentage of our wage is always going into this foundation and that percentage has grown over the years as I've been very, we've been very fortunate financially. And we would say to them, uh, you have one organization every year that you can choose to give to from that and but I want you to tell me why or tell us why um, you're the reason. And, and so they've always been part of that and they love that. And now it's they're very forthright. They're like, we're not giving enough in environmental causes, Dad. You need to do more of this. They're very on it. So um, I'm really proud of them for that. Let's take a step back. I want to discuss with you about how you decide which causes to support and then how to support those causes. And I was wondering, like, there's different things. Like, you could make a grant or you could write a check. You could lend your name or your talent. You could make a special appearance or you could leverage your social media. And I just wondered, how does this process work for you in deciding about what to support and how to support it? You know, there's a, it's, that's a great question. It's, uh, for me, becoming more analyzed. I'm really into this. Uh, I think it's a wonderful question. Deb has always been it, it, children. It was always for her, her heart just goes to children, inequity, um, injustice. And so it'll always go there. There's a certain amount of her giving that is just... We just say yes. So, you know, like your friends, are, you know, I'm running the marathon. I'm doing the this. I've got the bake sale. I've got whatever it is. Yes, yes. We just say yes to that. But for me, it, it started with a real um, interest around poverty. Um, that sort of really linked me to realizing that, you know, global warming and poverty are so inextricably linked that you can't really tackle one without the other. And now I've really been doing a lot of work and talk with the uh, – like William McCaskill and Toby Ord, who are really the pioneers of the effective altruism movement, which has a number of organizations like Giving What You Can, um, the 80,000 Hours Project. These are very practical, empirically based, scientifically backed ways of looking at how to do the most good with your time and money. And I'm really into that idea, you know, because it's easy to get carried away with sentiment or drawn to something. But, you know, we, we've got a lot of work to do. So I want to make sure that we can make I, us, uh, the Jackmans, I suppose, can make the most effective contribution. This is so impressive. And I am fascinated by this analytical approach. I wonder then, do you discuss with these agencies and these organizations what areas you're most interested and passionate about? And then do they come back to you and say, here, we vetted these charities, or these are the charities that make the most social impact in the areas that you're interested in? You know, tell me how it works. Yeah, well, they put those online. There's nine organizations that they'll say. So at the end of each year, I will look at those because I know how harshly they've looked at all the organizations and why. Um, but I talk to them personally because you, you went back earlier, like how do you divide you know, writing a check as opposed to turning up as opposed to your work. Like there's all different ways we can contribute. And what they're saying to me is, I mean, I'm very financially blessed, but the money I can give is not as effective as perhaps lending my name or my time or my energy to promoting something or doing a project. Now, I'm involved with them and they're trying to set up a fund to create projects, scripted documentary projects with the purpose of doing the most good. And really looking at it, not just hoping for the best, but measuring how well it does in whatever 
subject it is. This is interesting, Jan. I'm just, this is something I'm really working out right now. And Toby Ord challenged me on my belief of being anonymous with most of my giving, which I've always done, which sort of the way I was brought up. You shouldn't give for the, you know, pat on the back or the recognition. And I agree with that. So I've almost everything Deb and I have done has been anonymous. And he says, well, what if I told you you could do more good if you actually told people? And I said, well, it feels sort of icky. And, and he goes, all right, but do you think the person who received the mosquito net in Africa who wouldn't have got it otherwise cares about your ethics or your morals? And I was like, no, I guess they don't care. <laughs> so he said, well, you donating one net is great, but you saying I'm donating a net might get someone else to donate it. So that's two. So I would argue that that's more effective. And I was like, okay. So now I'm really looking at that. I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to probably announce it, <laughs> what I'm doing. And so that's, a, that's an idea of in real time change that is happening because of these conversations I'm having with these brilliant philosophers. They're really philosophers. I am so interested in this. I feel like we should do a whole podcast just about the strategy of deciding how to support a cause. Yeah, well, I know it's fascinating. Oh, just on another front, even foundations. So I just said to them, I said, so we have a foundation in my head, we've accrued an amount of money. And now that money we could invest and give, you know, the proceeds of forever. He goes, actually, the math doesn't, it's not as effective as if you just gave it away, like earn a certain money, whatever money you had and gave it away now. And I was like, really? And he goes, yeah, these founders, there's many, many foundations around the world, some of them with billions of dollars and they give up you know, 5% a year. And he goes, but actually it's now mathematically proven that if they just gave that money now, it would be more effective. Now that's, I find that fascinating. So that's something I'm mulling over, you know, it's a huge change for me. That's amazing. It's like the butterfly effect. Yeah. So in context with your social media, you've really been inspiring to me. And I know that others are inspired by the things you post as well and the things you share. Yeah. And you've become quite a thought leader when it comes to giving back and philanthropy and social impact. And I think that you are a trusted resource now for your fans and for other people that are kind of everyday philanthropists. Yeah. I mean, one thing I've been very careful about is not to say, please, could you please donate or give money to this or give money to that? Because I rightly, I've done it a couple of times way back and I rightly got, but uh, oh, it's all well and good for you to say, you you know, all that sort of thing. And I, I get it. But at the same time, I think I probably do get access probably to have a look at some organizations and movements and people who are doing really great work. And if I say, hey, listen, I'm supporting them. I just want you to know they're fantastic. And they're doing X, Y, Z, uh, up to you, you know, that kind of thing. But the social media is amazing. This is a whole new thing. And I went into it a little bit shy of it, like feeling like I was getting into a relationship that I couldn't get out of sort of thing. And, you know, what if I wanted to take a break? But it's proved to me to be really fantastic, a great way to connect to, I guess, the people who are interested in what I'm doing professionally or, or in my life and, and to communicate really directly. Like just give you a specific example, I've had four or five basal cell cancers on my nose and I can just do a post literally while I'm sitting in the doctor's office rather than having the paparazzi follow me around and and to say hey guys don't be like me wear sunscreen you know and simple simple thing and I, I can't tell you how many people have come up to me and said because of that are you saved me because I, I had a melanoma and I didn't realize you know it's so simple and easy so I like doing that I like doing my I recommends because there's things that touch me that move me and I I'm like, like you, Jan, if something's good, if I feel it, I, it could be a song, a movement, a show, a book. I just like to share that. So now I want to single out the incredible work you've done with Broadway Cares over the years. In fact, just these past few months, when Broadway Cares was doing their in-theater appeals, you would lead a post-show auction. And the night I was at Music Man, you auctioned off three pairs of gloves, which fetched $60,000. So this inspired me, and I talked to our mutual friend, Tom Biola, who runs Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS, and he told me that cumulatively, you have raised nearly $8 million for Broadway Cares throughout the years for the shows you've been in. No individual actor has ever generated that kind of genuine fundraising as you have. 
And Tom said to me, and I'm going to quote him now, Hugh is truly our champion. The appeals made at the shows that he's been in have energized the entire community's efforts every time. And as news of his fundraising spreads across Broadway, each time more and more people are motivated. He has taught us all how it's done, how to engage with an audience in simply joining him in doing something good. It's lovely from Tom. He's a lovely man. Tom is a lovely man. I agree. Doing these audience appeals and supporting Broadway Cares, it makes me think about the special Tony you received for being not just an amazing performer, but an amazing philanthropist. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what all of that means to you and being part of the Broadway community. Uh, it was it was amazing. You know, I feel of all the places I've been lucky to work with, Broadway feels like home to me. It always has. I remember Glenn uh, trying to convince me to do the Tony Awards in 2003. And I said, Glenn, I, I, this is amazing, but I can't do that. He said, no, you can't. I said, I said, no, I can do it. Like, it's just, I shouldn't do it. I've never done a show on Broadway. I said, who the hell am I? I'm like an outsider. I'm going to come in. I'm going to hold I said, they're going to throw tomatoes at me. And he goes, no, 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 you don't understand. It's a real community. And I said, wow. And he finally convinced me. And I remember the first commercial break going back. And I'm like, you're right. I really thought they were going to go, what the hell? Who's this guy? Um, and I don't know why I, I'm still floored by it to this day, this feeling of open arms and acceptance and community that I, particularly the beginning, floored me. And it still really does. And I'm very inspired by Paul Newman. And I don't know if you've read his book. Um, his partner at Newman's Own uh, wrote it. And the title of it really sums up Paul, uh, it's a comment he made. It's called Shameless Exploitation in the Pursuit of Common Goods. So I don't mind selling off a tank top or a thing and having some fun because I know where it's going and I, I, I know how energized the whole community gets and being able to look after so many people and what Broadway Cares does, the Actors Fund, do, it just blows me away. And I think particularly with the pandemic, it, it's so clear of how important these organizations are. We need to look after our community and people struggle. Everyone struggles at some point. I don't care who you are. Everyone does. And just to know that you can reach out and not worry alone, whether it be financial or emotional or, you know, health wise, it's, it's so important. So um, I'm thrilled to be able to do it. I, I still have no idea why people will pay that amount of money for a pair of gloves. But <laughs> I do know why, actually. People want to give. They do want to be part of that community. That's, that's what I feel in my heart. That's when you come together at the end of a show, and there's no better time at the end of a show, Jan, because somehow 1,500 strangers come together and all those barriers break down. And so you saw the, like the, the cast, the young cast, would be doing backflips and cartwheels every time another thousand dollars. Like it was when I remember that night when sixty thousand dollars was raised. There was another night. It was like a hundred and ten thousand. And people who've been on Broadway in our show for so many years were crying on stage, and because they know where it's going and they know what it means. So now let's move on and talk a little bit about your frenemy. Ryan Reynolds <laughs> and the little feud you have going on and how yes. that also relates a little bit to philanthropy. This feud. Yes, this feud. Uh, listen, I got to actually, when it comes to philanthropy, that's someone you should speak to, Jan, because that man does r a ridiculous amount of good. It, it pains me to say anything positive about him, but I, I have to say it. No, I, <laughs> I love that Ryan came to your opening night and I love your little feud. It's actually very cute. There are a lot of people listening to this podcast that want to do good in the world and that are very inspired by you. But not all of us have the ability to write a big check or have a big social media platform. And I wondered if you could give some advice to the listeners on how people could become everyday philanthropists, everyday activists, and give back. It doesn't have to be money. It can be time. It can be volunteering. It can be, there's so many, it can be using what you do for a living, you know, and whatever job you have. I, I take this example from my father. So as he became influential in, in the world of accountancy, he used almost all of his time professionally to work with developing countries. So there's, you can do it professionally. You can do it, you can do it at the grocery store, the way you shop, 
conscious consumerism. You can do it in the way you take out your garbage and you can do it in the way you live choices you make, the people you're with, volunteering. You know, I'm very involved with Global Citizen. And what I love about Global Citizen is every year there's a massive concert and no one can buy a ticket. You have to earn a ticket. And you earn it by writing letters to senators, by volunteering, by soup kitchen, and what, whatever it is. There's so many ways you can do it. And I, I really encourage people who think, well, you know, I don't have a lot of money. I can't really make a difference. Um, it's not really about that. It's really about an energy of of using whatever you have and we all have resources it could be our time it could be our love it could be our energy it could be just stopping for a second to the homeless person on the street saying okay can i get you a cup of coffee you know it's a buck it's like you can just say hey i'm sorry i don't have any money um, but are you okay is it can i call someone for you are, are you all right there's so many ways we can do it and it's really about opening our hearts and our eyes and our ears i think to the world around us as i'm saying that I think equally important to giving is asking for help. And I think that's something we're not really talking enough about. I know it's Mental Health Awareness Month, but it, it's not always mental health. It could be physical. It could be financial. There are people who want to help. And sometimes I think that's a slight epidemic we have here. It's difficult or sometimes embarrassing to ask for help. So never worry alone is what I would say. Oh, Hugh, you just made me cry. I have tears in my eyes. <laughs> it's so true. It's so important to ask for help. It is. And it's so important to communicate. And it's so important to focus also on the little things because they make a big difference. So thank you for saying that. I know I speak for so many people. We are just so incredibly lucky to have you as part of our community. Thank you so much. Mm. Thank you, Jan. It's lovely. Thank you. And I love seeing all those Emmy Awards over your shoulder there. Um, speaking of Emmy Awards, and awards in general, where do you keep all yours? Uh, some are behind me, some are, some are in the Hamptons. I, it, my, my wife is very, Deb is very like, put them out. I go, oh, I don't know. Just put them out. She pushes me a little bit. Well, I'll let you go now. Thank you so much for being part of Broadway Gives Back. Sending so much love. Thanks for everything. Thanks, Jan. 